the Titan Fitness T3 Power Rack. Should you buy it? Find out on today's video. Someone here from windstrength.com. Uh, on today's video, I'll be reviewing uh, the Titan T3 Power Rack, uh, the centerpiece of my home gym, and it's a piece of equipment I've owned for around four years now. Um, this will be an update on a previous blog post I made through year review, so we're gonna get a little bit more insight um, after that three years. I'll also leave a link below uh, for the Titan Fitness page where you can find the T3 rack. Uh, it is uh, July 2020 as of recording. There is a lot of equipment shortages now just because of the, the gym shutdowns and all the other type of stuff happening. Uh, a lot of people want to train at home. Obviously no one saw this, a lot of the gym manufacturing shops and retailers are having a hard time keeping things in stock, uh, especially really popular pieces of equipment like squat racks and benches and things of that nature. They have a special page which is in stock section, so check that out and sign up for email updates. That's probably gonna be the best way uh, to get a hold of one of these racks. So I'm gonna start off the review uh, talking about value and the price point. Titan Fitness has made a name for themselves in the industry in the home gym space by making quite affordable and relatively cheap equipment that may or may not be close copies of a lot of competitors' equipment. The reason you're probably watching this and the reason that I bought the Titan 3 rack is budgetary constraints. This is an amazingly affordable power rack. I bought this rack in 2018 uh, during the Black Friday sale, so all up I paid $365, that's including tax. Uh, shipping has been free, uh, it's currently still free. At the time of recording, uh, shipping is free, which is an amazing deal uh, for shipping 265 odd pounds of steel. So as of posting this video, uh, I think this is like the third iteration of the Titan Squat Rack. Uh, it ranges in a price from $410 to $575, uh, depending on things like the color, uh, the depth, and the height of the rack. I believe there's regular and tall, as well as a 24 inch depth and a 36 inch depth. My recommendation is to get the biggest one that'll fit in your space, in your home, basement, garage, because bigger is always better. But all can you say, uh, if you can fill the space up, get the tall one. If you can fit that depth, get that 36 inch rack. Um, and that's just how, f how deep the rack is. I'll go over into the dimensions a little bit later in the video, but my biggest recommendation is to get the biggest rack you can afford and fit into your space. The rack that Titan copied, I mean inspired by it, is the Rogue Fitness R3 power rack. They're effectively doppelganger racks created on opposite sides of the world. If you look at the specs and put them side by side, almost identical, uh, except for a couple of key points. Uh, the Rogue R3 is welded, has welded sides, uh, whereas the Titan, the Titan T3 is, is bolt-on pieces. So when we look at uh, the price, the R3 has a base price of $695, and that includes J-cups and a pair of uh, pin pipe safeties. Uh, when you're factoring shipping and taxes, uh, the final becomes $873.25. Uh, that's shipping to Southern California, so depending on where you live, that'll probably vary. To put in a fair comparison, uh, if you did purchase the Rogue on Black Friday, they do offer free shipping, I believe, on their sales during that time of the year. I think it's now a whole month of sales. That'll knock off $124.83. So if you time it right, the lowest price you'll pay is $748.87. Just over double the cost of the Titan T3. Don't get me wrong, if the budget was available, I would probably totally get the Rogue R3 rack. Given that money is uh, a concern and a factor in buying things, uh, I obviously went with the Titan T3 because that's a significant amount of money there. Um, and for the rest of the video, this will be the last point of comparison I do between uh, the two, just because only seen an R3 on the internet, I haven't even touched one in real life. To do any comparison from my point of view will be completely unfair. Moving forward, I'll only focus on anything the T3 offers. So continuing on with the value point is everything you get with the Titan T3 rack, because you don't just get the rack and everything you need to assemble it. Uh, what you'll get is a pair of J-cups, uh, a pair of pin pipe safeties, uh, four band pegs, and four rack mounted weight plate holders. And this represents pretty amazing value and is pretty much everything you need for a basic squat rack setup in your home gym. So I think I have the second version of the J-Cups. If you buy it as of July 2020, you're gonna get uh, the new updated version of those J-Cups that I think are a lot better and they can handle more weight. I've squatted 515 pounds on the J-Cup with no issues. I use a Rogue or higher power bar with pretty aggressive knurling. So when, you do, when I do twist that barbell and adjust it, uh, it is starting to scratch up that plastic liner, the UM 
some HW plastic, but that's not really a fault of Titan. I believe anytime you scratch plastic with metal, the metal's gonna win, which is a good thing. Uh, the one thing I would like to see is that plastic liner go all the way over that lip. My version is rated for 800 pounds. I believe the new updated ones are rated for 1,000 pounds. And if you're squatting that amount of weight, probably get a better rack. If you're close to elite level powerlifting, you probably shouldn't be using a Titan rack. The other downside of my iteration of the the J cups is that they both uh, swing out of the rack the same way. It's a very minor inconvenience and something I'm just used to now, uh, but it would be nice if they swung alternating sides like that and the new updated version of the J cups swing out or in depending on how you want to put those in there. Next up will be assembly. Assembly wasn't that difficult. It was just very awkward being uh, one person trying to put this together. If you had, if you had a mate come around, be super easy, probably knock it out in a lot less time than I did. Probably took just over an hour to put this whole thing together, uh, maybe closer to two hours, but it was kind of fun. I kind of like building Ikea furniture, so that wasn't a big of an issue. Uh, but nothing was missing in the packaging, nothing was uh, damaged in shipping. I think the bottom of one of the uprights was scratched, but it's on the floor, so it wasn't really effective, but I didn't get any major dense or noticeable scratches. The packaging was definitely dinged up. I forgot to take pictures of that or I've deleted them off the phone. I don't have those anymore. That's not necessarily solely on Titan. Uh, the logistics handling company does have a part to play in that. And I mean, understandably, it is 265 pounds of metal shipped in separate boxes, but it's still an awkward thing to move around. So as long as it gets you in one piece and everything's there, it's kind of fine. And that was my experience, but other people have different experiences with Titan fitness shipping. So Titan does recommend bolting the unit down to the ground. The T3 does have uh, holes to put concrete anchors. That's something that I really recommend doing as well. Um, they sell the X3 and the X2, I think, both of which don't require bolting to the ground. So definitely go down that route. If you know you can't or won't uh, bolt this into the concrete just because of that extra stability and extra safety factor. I used the rack for about a year without bolting it to the ground. I simply had the four weight posts uh, on each leg. I was never really worried about the rack tipping over just because of physics and I was inside of the rack, not outside lifting. Um, and I had the four, the four posts weighted down with as much weight as I had. Uh, and I also have about five inches of clearance to the top of the ceiling. So if it did manage to ever probably really take out beams in the house, so that'll probably stop it before it tipped over. So re-racking the weights uh, would slowly walk the feet out over time, probably about an inch over the course of a month. That is something you want to be aware of. That's why I recommend bolting it down, uh, just to keep that stability. Swinging from the pull-up bars, I was just curious to see if that would move it. Yes, it does. Don't do that. Uh, the bigger reason you want to bolt it down is to reduce the sway and flexing within the frame. Every joint is actually bolted together, so when you have movement, things are going to rub against each other, and there's going to have a tendency for those bolts to get unloosened as you're flexing and moving that metal, and that's going to be the weak point of the rack there. So when you bolt that down, you add in that extra piece of stability uh, that'll take some of that pressure and sway off of the upright uh, bolts. And that's just not something that's probably going to be catastrophic, but it is just nice to know that that doesn't move around and sway and shift. So the posts themselves are 11 gauge steel. Uh, they have that west side hole spacing. So which means for right around that bench press range, you're going to have uh, one inch hole spacing. Uh, for the rest of the upright, there's going to be two inch hole spacing. And between those two uh, settings there, you're able to find the perfect height for both your bench press and like any other lift you want to do. The one downside is there are no numbers on the uprights. That's something you kind of get on uh, more expensive equipment. So I just come around with a Sharpie or an oil marker. I've recently started putting uh, labels on the right holes and that saved a lot of time trying to figure out where to put it. Uh, the uprights again are two inches by three inches, which is a rectangular shape. That's a nice feature, I think, uh, because it does help to minimize any hits that you get when you walk out, especially for a squat. Um, as you walk out, you're obviously swaying from side to side and using a, uh, an Ohio power bar, the collars are slightly narrow to allow you to load more weight onto that. But what that means is that those weight plates are closer to the uprights. So I do occasionally hit the weights on the side as I walk out. Nothing major, but it is uh, nice to have that uh, extra inch of clearance on each side. The unit does come with both a narrow, a regular grip and a fat grip pull-up bar. So one and a quarter inches in diameter for the normal pull-up bar, which is about the same size as an Olympic size barbell. And then uh, a two inch diameter. Uh, fat grip pull-up bar, both are awesome. Both are smooth. Both of those pull-up bars are structural. So there was one problem I did face when I received the unit uh, after I put it together. Uh, one of the upright posts, the holes didn't get drilled properly. Um, so one side had them off. So what that meant was a safety pipe the safety pin that went through actually came in at an angle. Uh, so it meant it didn't, I couldn't use 
safeties for a certain section of the rack. Only like, I think the middle holes didn't line up. But a couple of emails back and forth with Titan and they fixed it up, but that was a pretty slow process. So all in all, it took about a month for them to get back to me. Um, I wrote I wrote about that more in depth on the blog, uh, but I did end up getting uh, an extra pin and, pin and pipe safety, uh, just with weird miscommunication, I guess. Uh, but eventually they sent out another upright, which had all the holes lined up uh, and they told me to just keep the other upright. They made it right in the end, but it did take about a month to get that rectified. But again, it didn't cost me anything and I got out of the deal a free pin and pipe safety as well as a free upright. And one interesting thing to note is that the finish on the new upright that I got or the replacement one is actually nicer than all the other three posts. So I don't know if that's a sign of the QC at the time of Titan or that they were in the process of upgrading um, finishes for the Titan racks. So after the use of use, none of the bolts have loosened up, which I'm not really surprised by. I bolted it down. I anchored it into the concrete, so I wasn't expecting any bolts to loosen, but nothing's really shifted out of place. Um, structurally, the unit is just as strong today as it was four years ago. Um, they do include lock washers, which I highly recommend using. Uh, so that'll stop any creep of the washers for that movement just because you are hitting that hitting those uprights every time you re-rack the weights. Uh, because it is, uh, I'm, I'm not sure if this is about the quality or the thickness of the steel or the relying on the bolts for structural stability, but there is movement whenever I rack the weights. Even readjusting the barbell sideways can sway the rack side to side, but definitely when you do re-rack that weight, especially with a squat, you're gonna notice the, the entire unit does shake, even when it is bolted into the concrete. And I think that's just that's just the, the squat rack. So let's move on to safety. Uh, the T3 is currently rated for a 1,100 pounds rackable weight and a total rack weight of 4,400 pounds. I'm guessing this means that you can load 1,000 pounds onto the bar and then have 1,000 pounds on each post to keep it safe. So if you have under 4,000 pounds of weight plates in your gym, you're probably gonna get away with this being a very capable squat rack. The updated T3 J cups actually hold uh, 2,000 pounds each for a 4,000 pound weight rating total. Uh, my older version of the J cups only had an 800 pound per unit weight rating, so a 1,600 pound uh, rackable capacity. Again, with these weight ratings, you're gonna have to be breaking world records and I said it before, if you're at that level, you probably should have a better rack. Look at a nicer, more expensive rack, just because at that point, you kind of deserve a better rack. But again, for most lifters, this is going to be very overbuilt and very stable. Uh, my current squat PR is 515 pounds, uh, which is obviously held up just fine. I did have a failure at 505 pounds, which I dropped the weight on the safety pins. Nothing bent, nothing got really damaged, apart from my ego. We all walked out of that alive. I think, but I'm not the biggest fan of the pin and pipe safeties just because they're kind of uh, finicky to get in there. If you can afford it, get the straps. I think they're slightly easy to put in and out, but again, the pin and pipe safety do the job. Uh, what I've done is I've actually wrapped some really thin uh, rubber around each of those pipes, and that was more to protect the barbell than it is to protect the rack, just because I am using the Rogo High Power Bar, which costs about as much as my rack does. So it's for a $20 investment, that's definitely something I want to do is protect that really expensive barbell. So now let's talk about function. Um, the rack itself is really great, it doesn't move, so it does everything I want it to be, and it's kept me alive after a couple of failures, so hey, two, two out of two right there. But the nice thing about the T3 series is that Titan offers a huge amount of accessories that you can add on, you can bolt on other extensions, so you can have a bigger rack, have more arms added out of it. You can use it for a whole host of things, so just check out that T3 accessory page and you're going to see how just how versatile this can be. Uh, I only have two attachments. Uh, one is that extra upright post I mentioned earlier. I just put a cross member across the top and then I bought the double landmine attachment. So I have one landmine on 
one landmine attachment on each base post. So as I mentioned earlier, I purchased the 24 inch depth. One thing I would change, I would highly recommend it if you can fit it and afford it, get the 36 inch depth rack. And that just gives you more space to play with. It does, it, it is fine for squatting, for doing all the movements. I don't have an issue with actually performing the movements in the rack. So I'll squat, overhead press, bench press all inside the rack. Uh, but the depth becomes an issue when you want to store weight plates on the uprights. When you try to bench, I hit the weights uh, if I don't set my bench just at the right position, which gets really annoying, uh, as well as floor presses is another thing, or Z presses. Uh, you have to set up where you're lifting far enough away from the uh, weight storage at the bottom so you don't bump those when you're going up or down, especially when you have 45s all the way around. Uh, that's just going to get annoying. Um, so again, if you can afford to get that 36 inch depth just for that extra room for storage, especially if you plan to use uh, the rack to store weights. Now, if you don't need to store weights on that the rack i would still say get that 36 inch rack because what it does it, it'll allow you the extra option to use both sides of the rack uh, to do supersets or to have a workout partner trained at the same time so the finish um, the finish is what it is i it's held up pretty well over the last four years um, i'm here in southern california so no real adverse weather conditions it doesn't get crazy anything really apart from the heat and that doesn't really affect metal uh, but the biggest wear and tear on the finish is really the um, taking in and out of the j cups and the spotter arms that's really all you're going to be playing around with occasionally the the barbell is going to hit the uprights but that doesn't really happen that much it's really just that wear and tear on the paint and the finish when you take those uh, j cups on and off and again not that bad the j cups really get the most of that smaller aesthetics and nothing that really concerns me about the safety or integrity of uh, the function of the squat rack. Uh, the included weight plate holders are going to probably get the most amount of abuse and show the most signs of wear and tear, just because you are sliding that more often than you're not. Uh, and as you can see with the with the zoom in here, it's it's really just aesthetic again, just like the squat rack. It's held up surprisingly well, actually. I thought it would have been uh, really bad by now, but it just seems to hold up just fine. So durability. Um, I personally lift maybe three to six times a week over the last four years, about an hour or two a time, and I'm really just mainly lifting. I'm always using that squat rack to some way or another over the course of a workout day, and it's held up just fine. Again, nothing structurally seems to be wrong with it at all. Uh, really, it's just finish wearing off when on those high touch points um, and the high rub points where there's metal on metal happening. Um, I can't imagine the steel getting worn away gradually over time unless there's some sort of catastrophic failure which i think should have happened by now especially dropping 500 pounds on the rack that should have destabilized and affected something uh repeatedly racking re-racking weights over 400 pounds i think would have done something too i'm not exactly the most gentle re-racker when it comes to those heavy weights so if it hasn't happened now i don't think it'll happen in the future uh, so quality um I think the quality is great for what you pay, but again, that comes from my limited personal experience with home gym equipment. Um, I haven't touched anything obviously more expensive than this. I haven't played around with a road rack before, so I have no point of comparison. The only point of comparison I have is uh, a cheaper cat barbell squat stand, which was using really thin metal. That only had a weight rating of 400 pounds. Um, so I really wanted to upgrade from that just from a safety perspective. Uh, but it is a, a huge, this is a huge step up from something that costs maybe two to three hundred dollars so I think once you enter this realm of racks that are made by reputable manufacturers that hold a thousand pounds uh, I don't think there's anything you really need to worry about I'm sure if there was catastrophic failure that resulted in death or injury from using Titan fitness equipment it'd be plastered all over the internet and given that it's held up to pretty frequent abuse over the last four years I think it's it's doing its its job of keeping me alive while lifting and giving me extra versatility and functionality in, in the home gym. And when it comes to cars, it's a Toyota versus a Mercedes. Both will get you to the, the same place. There's huge price point differences between the two of them, but you can't compare the Mercedes to the Toyota necessarily because you've paid far different amounts for them. I don't have any major complaints with my T3. Uh, the welds aren't pretty, but they do the job and they've held up over the years, even with some abuse and some <laughs> hitting them. So again, I think you can't go wrong by getting the T3, and for the price point, I don't think you'll regret it. So a couple of interesting things uh, that I haven't been able to mention yet. First thing is I talked about the depth. Uh, I've talked about the height now. Uh, my rack measures at, the rack that I bought measures at 91 inches in height. Uh, my ceiling height is eight feet. 
uh, so 96 inches, so we get about five inches of clearance. I'm about 5'8", and I'm able to do overhead pressing with a regular barbell uh, inside the rack. Uh, I do have to stand on my tippy toes to get the pull-up bar. I generally just use a little foam stand so I can just get my grip or I'll jump up and grab those pull-up bars, but I can hang from there with just my feet kind of brushing the floor. That kind of gives you a perspective of height. If you're taller, again, try and get that tall version of it. I would stand against a wall and measure how high up your hands uh, reach on a wall and then see if that is gonna clear the upright post because that's gonna be the biggest hurdle you have. If not, your ceiling height is gonna be the limiting factor there because those 45 pound plates on the outside are probably gonna hit the ceiling before they hit this rack. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is I only have five inches of clearance from the top post, so that gives me about eight inches of clearance uh, between the pull-up bar and the ceiling. I've hit my head a couple of times when I first got the rack. Uh, one solution to that would be to mount those pull-up bars slightly lower on the rack so you don't have to worry about A, jumping up to hit that, to reach that pull-up bar and be hitting your head on the ceiling there. Okay. So overall, I think the T3 represents an amazing value option rack for the budget-minded consumer. Uh, just definitely targeted home gym users. I don't think you would find this piece of equipment or level of equipment at a commercial gym, but again, that's not who it's made for. Uh, the one thing I would recommend, obviously, is to get the biggest rack that your space can fit and your budget can allow. Uh, recently, it does look like Titan has stepped up their game in terms of like improvement of the features, improvement of design, improvement of quality. The finishing is light, slightly nicer than what I have. It sounds like overall you're probably getting maybe a 10% better Titan experience than I will have, but again, that's just from what I've read and the research I've done. So I don't think you can go wrong by getting a Titan, uh, Titan equipment. Um, the one thing I would suggest is staying away from their version ones of things. So if they just release a new piece of equipment, wait for the version two to come around just because it gives them uh, time to implement that feedback from the real world application and the version twos of a lot of their stuff are far better than the version ones of a lot of their equipment. Is it the nicest rack on the market? <laughs> By a long shot. But to answer the question of if you should buy this rack or not, I think it's a yes. Um, definitely in the top five of the rack options available in this price point, I don't think you're gonna get more for the amount of money you're gonna pay for. Now, when you're looking at getting more a more high quality rack, you're gonna look at spending more money. So if you can stretch that budget out, definitely do that. But if you're tight on the budget and you're looking for something that can help you safely lift at the house, uh, the Titan T3 is probably gonna be one of the best ways that you can go down that route. And when you purchase it, put it together, use it for a couple of years, I don't think you're gonna regret buying this rack. So hopefully this video helped you reach a buying decision, uh, add some more data points to your considerations for what type of rack you should buy. I'll leave links below for the Titan Fitness webpage for that T3 rack as well as all the accessories. That way you can see just how versatile uh, the T3 rack can be. Uh, this has been Stellan from Winshank. Then remember, a better life through strength.